Hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. This is episode number 215. Yesterday I thought it was 215, but it's actually 214. Today is 215, 215. How are you doing? How are you feeling? As you can see, today is a very different podcast to most weeks because, number one, I don't have my glasses on. If you're watching via the YouTube, you should see that. I'm squinting at the camera now and looking weird at you, but I'm actually <coughs> wiping them in my little t-shirt here. And number two, this podcast will be a little bit shorter than usual. It's only going to be half an hour in length because unfortunately I only have half an hour left of time in order before I have to work. As I mentioned previously yesterday, I'm trying to figure out a plan, a kind of working posting production schedule that I can kind of stick to. Um, at the moment, I'm trying to do the podcast in regular hour length on the Tuesday and Thursday when I don't work out. No, sorry, uh, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, on the Tuesday and Thursday when I'm not working out because this week I'm just running. So I'm doing three days of running. So I'm working out. Or I'm probably hopefully going to do four. I, I did a run yesterday, 4.5. Today I did three miles. Tomorrow I'm going to do another two miles. And then on Sunday, I'm going to do a long run. So the days I'm not working or the days that I'm, you know, not run. So the days I'm not running or working out, I'm going to then dedicate that kind of hour space of time that I would have had working out, wherever it may be, getting showered, having breakfast. So that as soon as I have time, as soon as I'm ready and dressed, I can start the podcast and get that out there. Um, these are the things you have to do, man. When you're, you know, when you're working a nine to five and you're trying to do these projects on the side, you have to kind of make time you have to kind of move stuff around in your uh outside life in order to accommodate the things that you want to do right um so there are other hobbies I, I would like to spend more time doing such as you know recording mixes uh finding new tunes preparing playlists for my dj sets but i didn't have to push that further back into the evening so now when i do my podcast in the morning i got to work monday to friday podcast in the morning um get it all uploaded and done so get the get the kind of flyer done for it get the get the thumbnail and the cover art sort out the copy sort out the tags get that kind of preloaded in a notepad so that when i go to work i can already have the audio version of it loaded up onto my play onto my upload um platform which is spreaker get that distributed everywhere and then during my lunch break i can then have the other bits uploaded pre-uploaded onto my youtube so that when i come back home i can just start uploading it again because the internet in my house is far quicker than it would be in a pret a manger or something and i spend the evenings from the hours of seven to whenever i get back home because sometimes i get back home at half seven because i take the bus back so i can have an hour of reading i spend that hour back home i spend that so i spend that time when i come back home just you know uploading my playlist downloading songs getting my stuff sorted out so it's kind of you know it's been a bit crazy but so far so good and um as i've noticed with most of my things in life you know the, the more down i start to feel the more shitty i feel it coincides with the lack of projects i have going on the outside so i just have to kind of uh busyfy or busy myself with things and then i kind of feel better about where i am and my current situation because the more time i have to think about stuff the more depressed i get which is probably not the best way to deal with things right you should kind of probably deal with things head on you should probably sit in your kind of uncomfortableness and kind of work through the issues but you know we all deal with things differently and um until i get different results until it starts to affect me negatively i probably won't change as most people are right most people do kind of ascribe by that i know we like to get all annoyed when people when people on reality tv shows do things that we wouldn't do but mostly people do people only continue doing the thing they're doing because it worked before in the past or it's continuing or it's actually working right now in the present so lay off them a little bit and give them a break um so we're gonna get into this dive on deep because like i said to you before there's not much time not much time time is a wasting we don't want to waste any more time because you know we have things to do and i'm sure you guys have things to do as well so some topics here i want to quickly rattle through that i haven't kind of mentioned before Ba-ba-dee, ba-ba-dee, ba-ba-ba. um i be for silent movie so there's a silent movie coming out about abifa i'm not sure you guys are familiar with this where is it why, why isn't why, why is that not coming out that way okay let me see, I be for silent movie. Where is it? <clears throat> I swear, that's why I mix my or do I see it somewhere else? Must be a mix mic, right? There you go. Okay, so uh this movie is coming out about Abifa. It's a silent movie. I'm not sure why it's a silent movie, but I guess maybe to make it a little bit more ephemeral to get a bit more of a personal touch and maybe to really exclude the benefits of Ibiza. But basically, this is article I saw a mixed mag that looked really interesting. Um, has anyone been to Ibiza? I haven't been. I would love to go one day just to kind of say that I've been there. The fact that I went to Robert Johnson, the fact that I'm going to go to... Um, oh, what's that club in Dusseldorf? Shit, I forgot the name. Oh, sorry, Munich. There's a club in Munich I want to go to too. 
I want to do a big club tour one day. Um, I've already been to Robert Johnson, like I mentioned. I want to go to a few others and just go and visit them and see what they like. Um, just for my own kind of curiosity. I think it's really important. Like, you know, Concrete in Paris is closing. Um, a few other legendary clubs around the world are closing. I want to go to that um, club in Tbilisi in Georgia that's been at the forefront of the um, of the movement, of the LGBTQ movement, and just kind of see what these things are like in real life as opposed to kind of looking at it from the outside in. I think it's really, really important for society in general. Oh, it's been really important for my electronic musical journey in, in New uh overall but this article anyway going back to the article with fatboy slim um i'm sure he's spearheading in his project but anyway it says that fatboy slim and julian temple silent movie <clears throat> about a beef is an intervention for the island um the article says the following so mix mag teaming up with fatboy slim acclaimed director julian temple has brought Ibiza's history to film with Ibiza's silent movie. With Cook acting as musical director, the soundtrack features EDM with jazz piano and bizarre techno laden WW2, a new World War II sequence. Pierced by the sound of planes and littered with warnings about tourism, the film lays out the often ignored history of the island, dispelling rumors and shrouding it in myths at the same time. Expect Cook classics. Um, Alfred Futures and the odd cameo from Bez. Here, Temple discusses the soundtrack and challenges of filming that beef and the impact of VIP culture on the island. Um, at the start of this film, there's a clip of a rowdy Ryanair flight. Why was it important to that tone, to set a tone? I think one of the themes of the film is how tourism can achieve a kind of overkill situation, particularly on small islands like Ibiza. There are a large number of flights arriving on that island. To me, that's the irony of the condition of what is really still a very beautiful place you know that there are wild untouched areas particularly in the north but they are flown over by thousands of people for pleasure in the summer season long so that the kind of travel okay cool um i guess the travel tourism for electronic things is interesting right going back to the whole berlin thing which i mentioned ad nauseum on here again excuse but hey it's my podcast say what i want um the tourism thing is interesting because with berlin you get the sense that you know whenever you go on the ryanair flight to berlin for me from my own personal experience when you look around the flight you see tons of people who obviously maybe, you know, go in there for business or who are native and go back to visit their family. But you do see a lot of people, especially during the summer or during the winter months when people are going to go party, that are going there to have a good time, right? They're all kind of, you know, they're probably in the same sort of age range that you are. They maybe have the same sort of level of interest. But you never get the feeling that when you're in Berlin that um, it's overcrowded or that it's um, getting a bit too much. It's getting a bit overrun. I guess maybe because it's a bit more sparse, it's a bit more spread out, it's a bigger, it's a bit of, you know, it's bigger square footage um, or area wise than I'd be for in general. But I never get the oversaturation, I never get the feeling it's oversat- oversaturation of it, really. If anything, when you're in Berlin, you might feel as if there's a lot of expats there, right, which is different. Because I think this is specifically talking about travel tourism, but there might be a lot of expats in Berlin where you meet people who have maybe only just moved there, have been there maybe a couple of months and just kind of finding their feet. But you don't really feel as if like, you know, there's tons of people there and there's not a lot of native people that have been living. Or let's say people that have been there for more than 10 years. You you meet them all the time in Berlin. It's not like an uncommon thing. Um, I wonder how they're able to balance that. I guess maybe, again, the plethora of clubs, the fact that most of the clubs stay open, right? There are a huge number of clubs that have closed over the years, don't get me wrong. But for the most part, all the big legendary staple ones that we know of, right? Um, CC Foss, Ohm, um, Kit Kat, Bergheim, um um i don't know that 88 one that kind of like you know rock one i forgot what that was called that one there prince lausberg there's uh, prince lausberg there's loads of clubs in berlin that are still open that are around now so maybe that kind of goes to and i guess i'd be for the consistently or continually keep closing um season in season out so maybe keep you have to keep keeping up with it people are coming in um the, the laws are getting stringent i think with every new mayor they have a different kind of idea of what the island should look like and what they're trying to promote they all kind of try to put their mark on it politically and it kind of devoids into this weird place anyway it continues here would you say the impact of tourism has made the pro- point of the film um the the director says the following you know the end of the film is saying that where is i be for now it's almost like the film is a guide i hope to clubbers who go there i just like them to understand that there is an incredible mixture of elements that make this island so individual and unique that's definitely a place worth saving and not dis- disrespecting, which over tourism can do if you don't expect the place. I think it's an ir- intervention. The film is a kind of warning to Ibiza and everyone who loves Ibiza that it does not need to look at the court. It, it does have to look at the course and they set uh, on and listen to places like Barcelona, um, where there have been huge dem- demonstrations last year. If places are going to remain individual um, and have such a strong identity and spirit, as someone like Ibiza, otherwise it can be all washed away in a state of sameness, and that would be a terrible thing. 
But yeah, but because even with the negativity around Ibiza, you still see a so you you know most if not all electronic DJs that everyone knows and loves goes to play there. Even someone like my, even someone that I adore, or some me and my friends kind of absolutely adore the ground he walks on, Dixon. Somebody who's been very adamant and very um, specific about. You know, not one in. I remember an interview he did with Red Bull actually when he was a girl. He answered, he said, Oh, he was very adamant that he wouldn't take a right B for a residency, right? He'd only take it under certain conditions. And obviously, the conditions that he'd done were what you see now, right? His Moderna party is where he's basically created this kind of all encompassing digital experience in you know, a sort of like weird AR. He collaborated with, um, uh, what sort of, um, what, do you, what do you call it? Um, augmented reality sort of stuff. You collaborated with Matthew Williams from the leaks. So you can see that like, he definitely wanted to have like his, uh, the whole autonomy of the party and to really curate it from the front to the back. Um, but you see even someone like Dixon who's very picky about the way he plays or where he plays. He's even decided to go to Ibiza. Ibiza seems to be the one, this kind of like um, ground where everyone seems to meet up, right? It's sort of like in streetwear fashion. Everyone seems to kind of congregate around Paris Fashion Week nowadays, right? Even Bobby Hundred, somebody who I think back in the day was very much against the whole fashion movement of streetwear, right? Somebody who probably wouldn't want to be seen dead with some of the people that he's having to frolic with around Paris is having to promote his book in Paris, right? which I guess is a, a marker of how far Street West progressed, where, you know, the blur, lines are blurred, so Bobby Hundreds being in Paris doesn't really look that weird, but Paris for Street West fashion is probably equivalent to IB for electronic music people, so, and I hear a lot of industry people go there, a lot of agents, a lot of managers go there on holiday or to go support their clients and just get end up getting wrecked over there, so it's a kind of all-encompassing project, but um, yeah, I, I don't know how they're going to be able to draw it back, I think it's probably... The horses have long gone and long bolted out of the stable. Being able to pull that one back is going to be an effort that was going to require some, you know, some intervention from the government or from, you know, people far, far, far above um, the people making this film. But I guess, like you said, like um, like I like I think I read in the book. Actually, I just finished now this book about the the narco traffickers in Galicia, right? And um, really, a lot of the a lot of the movement it kind of tallies kind of the sort of like downfall of the Galician uh, narco traffickers who first started with tobacco and then started to get into cocaine. And essentially, the, their downfall was initially started by the local residents, right? Being outraged that some of their children or some of their kids from the local community were succumbing to, you know, this incredibly pure cocaine coming across from Colombia um, that was, you know, being sold, you know, for pennies, right? Because there was so much of it on the on that little region of Spain. <clears throat> that some of the kids were developing drug drug um uh, drug addictions and some of them eventually died so some of the local parents or some of the local moms specifically banded together and decided to demonstrate uh, in order to kind of enact some change the police took notice investigated and then we got to a position where most of the police kind of wiped away or looked up some of the big players so <clears throat> a lot of that change came from these mothers kind of taking the stand so sometimes even though i can get a bit you know pessimistic about these kind of things i think what's one person's film gonna do i think as this book proved like you can make quite a big difference if you kind of you know take a stand with something have some evidence to back it up <clears throat> have people supporting you and you never know what can happen from that really you know that that, that up, highest up could probably take notes of it um let's scroll down and see the trailer here um <clears throat> the silent movie about bifa put it up on the screen that, that screen that screen grab looks mad in it <laughs> it's what it looks like it's a silent movie, so is it actually silent or oh, not? Okay, I think it's just like what, just people a silent movie. I wonder what that means. So let's just watch it. We've got images of women doing weird sun dances. I think so. There's a real hippie nature because I'm again. Um, what do you call it? Uh, the brunette is from Spain, and a lot of her parents' friends or friends go friends or friends go to Ibiza in order to kind of spiritually cleanse themselves. I know there's a big movement with some DJs going to Bali and going on silent retreats, but this looks pretty cool. I'd, I'd really go. I'd go to be honest. I wouldn't be mad at this. People on the fishing boats, people making crystals or dancing. White people love sitting on sand and meditating and shit. Videos of uh, animals on the ground, people lying in little lagoons and shit. Here we go, man. It looks pretty cool, though, to be fair. I'm not going to lie. Not as one of these parts. Just actually go and actually rave, properly rave, would be quite cool to go see. But again, you know, everyone dancing, topless people. Dancing girls, people DJing. Imagine DJing it, that'd be so fun, isn't it? People just literally out there just get fucked and you're just dancing. They don't really care what you play. Pacho Ibiza. Space mask on. Looks pretty cool to be as in the movie. I wonder if they're going to screen it all over the UK too. A lot of people are already over there from the UK probably, so it won't happen, but I would love to see it. Looks pretty cool, isn't it? 
I used to watch Wild Wild Country, which reminds me a lot of Wild Wild Country, really, doesn't it? Like, you know, kind of a cult, really, but not really. Um, and it's, I just find it interesting how the government are battling with it. It's just like, you know, the, you must know the only reason people are coming to Ibiza is to party and get loose, right? But they just, I don't know, I guess maybe the, I don't know, I wonder, I wonder why there isn't more of a cooperation between the nightlife or the electronic music party community and the local government i wonder why because th- essentially i've not heard of anyone uh, unless you meet somebody who's a native of spain right who's from spain you won't hear of anyone else who's actually gone to ib for just to solely relax or unless your parents are from the old school hippie era or who you know if your parents are the same age as like you know the guy that organizes Glastonbury that came from that kind of scene. I'd imagine they were probably OGs of, of, of Ibiza, right? They probably went there back in the day when it was really awesome. Um, or when it was untouched, right? But I think for now, everyone's going there to get fucked up, really. And I wonder why they're not really just being a bit more lax with it. But anyway, I guess they probably have their reasons. But yeah, that movie's coming out or is out already, right? When's it coming out? Um, let's scroll down the bottom here. It doesn't say when. When's it coming out? It doesn't say, actually, does it? Let me take off the sound and see if it says at the end. But it's going to come out soon. Just Google it and you find it. Um, it's called the IB for the silent movie. You know what I mean? I'm not finding all the information for you. Google that bitch, mouthballs. Anyway, next on the list here. Ba, 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 ba. What should we talk about here? Da, da, da. You know what? What about these Nike ACGS scrams? Talking about shoes. I remember I mentioned it yesterday about, you know... Um, the return of sneakerheads i feel as if like i maybe i'm starting this movement but i'm gonna i'm gonna push it forward i think you know sneakerhead culture has has got to a point where of no return really i think stock x valuation recently of a billion dollar company has maybe fueled the, that um situation now but i got a feeling it's gonna burst like all bubbles it will eventually burst and everyone trains will become worthless and when they do I will be laughing, not because I sense I get any kind of glee for people's failure, but because it will finally return to the point that I always liked, right? Sneakers were always cool to me, but now, you know, they've not become cool anymore because, you know, you know, you know what, yeah? That was the issue with sneakerheads back in the, even during like Nike talk days. No one wants to be known as a sneakerhead because sneakerheads, you initially thought of the first picture that came to your mind were, you know, Filipino breakdancers who, who, who weren't cool and probably still aren't cool now, but maybe it's changed because of those talent shows they have on TV and shit. And then the other thing you thought of were Nike talk users, right? People who specifically just wore expensive trainers without any any consideration of their outfits. And if they did have a consideration of their outfits, it was always about matching every tone of the color. So if the shoe had a bit of blue and red and pink, they'd have to have a bit of a blue, red and pink on their t-shirt, a bit of a blue, red and pink on their hat, a bit of blue, red and pink on their belt. It was just a bit matchy, matchy McPherson, right? So not really something that I'm really into at all. But I'm hoping that soon with stock x evaluation going to a billion there's only one way it can go i'm not trying to wish any ill will on the company at all but you know it's only one way it can only go down from now on i don't think the street the, the street shop market is going to sustain as much as it has done over the years i don't think so it's going to eventually pop as all things do pop and when it does people might get to a point where they just start appreciating the trainers for what they are great trainers and maybe the brands will stop um pumping out because they've they've effectively shorted the market right by consistently pumping out like model after model after model after model after model model, right but now um maybe we'll see a return to that and one of the returns to that might signal to would be the resurgence of the acg line right the nike acg line is probably one of their most under underused underutilized lines in the whole nike catalog they have so many amazing models the acg line itself all conditions gear has such an incredible story has so much scope towards it and um, it could encompass so many different sports or activities or people or ages or or colors or creeds that i really think it's an un- underused underused market but the only way they're going to recognize that is if people like you and i fans of sneakers start buying the shoes and one of the shoes that we could essentially start buying is this um first look at this retro of the nike air max acgs scram an amazing silhouette a bit stiff not the most you know flexible shoe in the world but in terms of just an all-round um walking shoe to go on a hike you know people say they go on hikes in la because i went i went to la um to go see the um the old future festival a couple of years ago and i went on a quote-unquote hike was essentially going up a hill in a park right it wasn't essentially a hike really but um a lot of that involves sometimes going off road right and wearing shoes like this is going to help you can go off road you can dust them down go go set a bar grab yourself a little drink and if you want to have a little boogie right an amazing model really i'm a big fan of them i think acgs are probably one of the only shoes out there in probably nike's catalog maybe apart from their vintage runners that look incredible with the short the shorter your shorts are i honestly swear to god like 
find any Japanese magazine um, that you can find. Especially Japanese magazine, maybe it's not a good example because most of the guys in there are Japanese and they're fairly short, so they make short shorts look amazing regardless what they wear. But honestly, that street star picture of seeing a little Japanese kid, a little Japanese guy wearing a pair of amazing vintage um, ACGs with some really short Patagonia shorts with like a clever little t-shirt on, something that is a bit vintage but not too vintage and a nice little hat. It's just something that's kind of ingrained in my head. And ever since then, I've kind of been in love with ACGs and obviously, you know, the story, um, the collection, the idea behind it, the range of items from clothing to everything. I think they've done a good job recently. Um, I know Elson Hugh from um, Acronym was in charge of the creative direction for a little bit. But, you know, I think maybe as a whole segment, it probably needed him to come in and start developing maybe the ACG Tier Zero line, the kind of exclusive stuff that you could do. But I think as an overall, they were probably far better off doing what they're doing now, which is just going back into the archive kind of kind of re-releasing loads of stuff um in contemporary colors and contemporary materials um and that's been really successful even though some of the stuff that Elson did for acg was fucking sick i really liked it um it probably needed it to be a little bit of a, a separate thing from the whole acg line but so far what they've done i think looks amazing um these air scrams are really really nice a great colorway they're probably going to be available for a long time because people don't buy stuff but i'm hoping the more i speak about these kind of shoes and put shoes out and put out more shoes out there that people aren't really speaking about the more attention they'll bring and hopefully kids will start buying them just test them, test them out with your outfits right you don't need to always wear the same thing everyone's got the same shoes on let's mix things up a little bit and hopefully because the, essentially these, these brands and companies only listen to your dollars right so if you're investing your money into these shoes they're going to see that there's a market for it and they're going to put more money into them and they're going to start retroing more shoes um if you keep buying air drawn on ones uh Jordan ones for instance retros they're going to keep making them right and then you know there's you can't complain when uh, a few of them are uh, come out and they've got shitty materials it's what you paid for um so yeah let's let's diversify our shoe trainer choices a little bit and see what we can do from there but yeah i'm a big fan of the shoe i think it looks really nice and for like a cream cream with navy um tones white midsole black outsole like you know clever shoe really um classic classic shoe Big fan of it. Definitely going to check it out. I think it's going to be out when later this month. Let's check the release date at the bottom of my hype beast. Um, July 5th, so at the end of the, the end of the week, you're going to be able to buy yourself a pair of Air Scram. So again, for £110, uh, again, something a bit different than what you'd usually have on most places, on most stores. And I'll, hopefully, too, most other retail stores start buying different stuff as well, man. All Sense, um, Essence, or whatever it's called, um, Tres Bien... Dover Street Market, they all have the same fucking shoes. It's no different. Like, you know I mean, let's, inter let's kind of mix up the buying process. I know some of the brands don't allow you to do so, but I would like a bit more interesting selections. But, you know, you can only wish certain things. What else is next on the list for you guys? Uh, oh, this is nice. Nike Air Tempo Fusion. This is fucking buff, mate. Um, I'm not a fan of the Fusion stuff with the hybrid shoes. Um, actually, Heron Preston did a really good collaboration recently. He did an Air Max 95, 97 I liked. I didn't really like the Pattern 95 BW. I thought that was butters. But these, again, I'm not sure if they're going to be for everybody. Again, please excuse my taste in shoes, but I'm trying to push things that aren't the conventional high piece um, silhouettes. But I really, really like these um, shoes. So these are the Nike Air Up Tempo Air Max 95s, right? So it's an original Up Tempo with essentially um, fused together with, uh, you know, the classic um, Nike Air Max 95 neon green um, um, shoe that we all know and love. Um, interestingly enough, the other day um, when I was out at lunch um, in central London, I saw a dude wearing a pair of vintage, like old school, probably from like 97 or some shit, right? Um, Co.jp um, 95, which I'm, I'm surprised he was able to wear because most of the bubbles are burst when you wear them for any sustained period of time. But he had them with a pair of like neon, so with a pair of indigo selvage denim, rolled up, no socks, just swagging down the street i thought oh they look so good and you could just tell from looking at them that they're vintage there's no he doesn't need to tell you he bought them a long time ago you just tell from the shape the tones the felt is a bit or the felt or whatever the suede is just a little bit softer than what they'd usually be like just beautiful 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 shoes right let's see if i can actually find a picture of them on here so i can show you guys nike air max 95 neon uh og right it's probably going to give me all the other shitty ones but i want the actual actual og you can see the difference in color uh where is it yeah there we go boom oh it's a really small picture in it but um this essentially is it right so that's the that's the og you see how fat that bubble is 
you see the kind of tones of the gray you see how it sits on the shoe even just without a shoe even without a foot in it because most shoes especially with nike have that weird banana silhouette but this even without a foot in it even without those kind of like shoe insert things people put to make them look flatter it looks just amazing great silhouette they could easily just retro these right with that same box um a kind of anniversary pair or celebration of the air max and just that's what they should do for air max day right just archive what every year archive one uh, iconic model from the air max range um remake it in the original because they always talk about the tour they went back in there and see honestly, nike are so annoying but they've got everyone by the balls i that's at least try like the added the, the stan smith is amazing right the um, the stan smith campus they, or the stands or even the campus that they brought back right they made them in the 80s then now they're just like you know the general uh shape for the most part in the gr range is that kind of vintage silhouette but nike back in the day you always say oh we don't have the tooling or the manufacturer's process necessarily around to kind of make that kind of last you work right but no you don't like you have all the money in the world make it work like that there's a story with jay lorenzo recently with his fear of god ones right that he made he's supposed to have to take his last from italy and bring it down so he could get achieve the same the shape that he wanted man and jay lorenzo a one-man army right essentially make you know with a small with a with a, with a micro luxury brand right operating at the highest level of course but you know it's a small operation compared to nike having to bring his own last to make a shoe with nike it's ridiculous right they should be able to recreate that last like in the blink of an eye man what the fuck is this you make fly white. you have flying it like why can't you remake a remake a last so that'll be sick for air max day right every year they just release one iconic air max in the original colorway individual materials with the original last with the original silhouette in the original box so just just redo it that's it if you're gonna re if you're gonna retro stuff retro do it that way but you know what do i know anyway um go to shoe the nike uh, air max up tempo hybrid looks fucking beautiful i love again i'm not really a fan of the hybrids i think you know they can go a bit crazy with them but i think this is really well done number one because i always i always thought that up tempo is a very underrated shoe in general i thought um people weren't really giving it that much attention um as per usual with some nike models i think they just need nike a lot like is a lot like supreme in some ways you know when um a supreme for instance the supreme items you see in a lookbook in a preview that you know for sure are going to be hype right and then there's some items you're not too sure about or you're deciding where you're not sure if it's a buy which i always say buy them don't wait for someone else to wear them first but the moment you see um who is who is celebrity vice um little jupiter or so whatever other instagram accounts out there that post pictures of um you know uh, the usual kind of hip-hop uh, street style kids and wearing them is a the moment that stuff sells out right when someone picks when little nas wears a uh, uh so is it, what's his name is it little nas asap nas sorry from asap rocky's crew decides to wear some pants or some shirt from supreme that wasn't featured on the, on the lookbook or that wasn't highlighted or a colorway of a jumper immediately that stuff sells out right um, and I think Nike is the same, is in the same sort of vein. Like, unless some celebrity or some influencer wears, starts wearing Nike up tempos, they're not going to be very popular. But I think they're one of my, they're one of my favorite shoes in the Nike range. That severely, severely, severely underrated. One of my favorite shoes, I think, out there. Um, just a great design, really, for the most part. I'm a big fan of them. Um, you see a lot of Japanese kids again who are no, who are known for putting on, you know, the most comp the most hardest to rock trainers. But you see a lot of them wearing them, but you don't really see a lot of other, other kids wearing them for the most part. But I'm I am i am a big fan of the shoe. I think it's incredible. Probably won't look that good on my feet because I've got fucking clumpers. Obviously Supreme Club rated on them a while back ago. Um but yeah, a really, really nice shoe. I'm a big fan of it. And this up tempo here, the few sorry, the fusion there looks really, really beautiful. I love it, man. Again, I wish they were able to make a bigger bubble, but nowadays they don't. They kind of, you know, shrink them down. Uh, maybe compliance maybe you could just maybe tear apart some of that rubber to kind of expose the bubble a little bit more but as a colorway i'm a big fan of them love them will rock the hell out of them again when are they meant to come out july 1st uh for 115 pounds um again nike up tempo fusion or hybrid um definitely recommend check it out in the vault green colorway um such a nice shoe there isn't it? I'm a big, really big 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 fan of it and um yeah hopefully highlighting these shoes will get people to buy them more man come on Wear different shoes. Stop wearing the same old models again and again and again and again. It's getting boring. And um, yeah, there we go. There we go. What else is on the list here? Can I squeeze something else in before I have to jet out? Bapidi bapidi bum. We got some runway trends. Oh, Aziz and Sari's made a comeback, right? It's got a special coming out very soon. I'll talk about that recent another time. We've got Wayward Wills have a t-shirt, whole collection of t-shirts, which is interesting, right? A will company making merch or making clothes, which is cool. Um, you know, 
this is a cool thing about skateboarding or about streetwear in general or skateboard culture in general maybe influencing streetwear culture or the other way around not sure how you word it but just the you know the ability for these small micro brands to exist in that way shape or form to sponsor a small team put on a small you know group of talented individuals they kind of believe in uh, put them in videos get them out there make some merch push that out there too it's just unprecedented it's really really cool and uh, again uh, as an artist or a graphic designer you get the ability too to work on these small little projects that get put to market straight away um you get something to put in your cv you get to work on creative direction there's a lot of carte blanche on there it's just an amazing time to be alive as a kid man it's kind of make your own brand you know just literally from the from your bedroom um based on wheels that you're supposedly making for your own little streetwear brand or for your own little skateboard company again real big fan of it and um, the wayward wheel guys are um are solid for the most part i bumped into a few of them here and there around the scene back in the day and yeah I'm glad they're still around doing bits and pieces with their clothing brand so far so good little photo shoot there in a pub or bar you know classic london shit but yeah um that's it man for now for the most part um this has been the Agassino Zinger Show, episode number 215. A little short one today because I got jammed to work, but these things happen. As per usual, if you're watching via the YouTube, give me a little thumbs up and a subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if you have any comments regarding what I spoke about, of course, leave them down below. If you're listening via the audio podcast, a five-star review will go a long way in helping people find the show. And um, apart from that, I guess I'll see you guys again tomorrow for another scheduled programming. Right back with the one hour content. But until then, see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Be safe and be in touch soon. Bye.